If we don't change how we communicate in our tone, our word choices, our eye contact, our empowerment level, our vulnerability, then really we can't expect things to change. Hi, welcome back to Soul Speak. I'm Meg Michelson. Thanks so much for joining me. And if you're new to the channel, thank you for starting with me today. There's quite a few episodes prior to this one, so if you're willing, I encourage you to go back and listen. And for those of you that are sharing and rejoining and the comments you've been sending my way about how you value this time on Wednesdays, thank you so much. Thank you for valuing the words that I'm putting out there. Um, that really does mean a lot to me and I appreciate the comments so much so. You know, it's not necessary, I know, and people are busy. But I do appreciate those comments when I know this is of value to people. So thank you. So recently I was working with a married couple, they'd been married a long time, on how they can choose to communicate more healthfully because they're in a rut. I've talked about the importance of healthy communication on previous episodes and I certainly will again in the future because it is so vital. Communication with self and with others is one of the most important things we can do. So communication is key in any relationship. And especially when we want our relationship to improve with self, with someone else, loved ones, boss, anybody. If we don't change how we communicate in our tone, our word choices, our eye contact, our empowerment level, our vulnerability, then really we can't expect things to change. You know, mostly we want our partner to change or our boss to change or our kids to change. Because just like that episode with Jacob and how comfortable it is to stay in that funk, to stay in that place when it doesn't feel so good to be living, it's like, uh, that same can be true of wanting to stay in our comfort zone and expect our partner to change. Because why? Because it takes effort. If you want to change anything about yourself, it takes first mindfulness. It takes that concentration. It takes focus. It takes determination. It takes the non-quitter attitude. And it's worth it and it gets easier with every step you take because you're creating new pathways. And now the new norm is way different than the old norm. So back to that couple I was working with, she asked him to go on a trip with some couples and he had already wanted to go on a different trip with her that he was planning or planning on. And he said though he would go and he said he wasn't really thrilled about it because he really wanted to go on this other trip, but he would go. Now they've been married long enough to know that he's polite and fun and, and he would participate. However, she was really bothered that he told her he wasn't excited about it and was hoping to go on the other trip instead. So when she got stuck on that, instead of understanding where he's coming from, that they'd still have fun, that he was doing this for her, she got upset and told him he was being selfish. But was he really? You know, think about that. When someone says they'll do something, like a, a friend of mine that used to say her husband wouldn't massage her back and then when he would, he would kind of complain about it, but he'd do it. Let the complaining happen. Just be grateful that they're doing it. Same thing. He will still have fun on the trip. However, when we focus on it's not perfect, then everything is going down. We are here and now we're dropping down and I'm going to explain that in a minute. When we want to change a pattern with ourself or with someone else, we need to get clear about that intention. We need to get clear. What is my intention with this relationship? What do I want? Now, what am I choosing to co-create? If they want a better relationship, they both need to look at how they are communicating with each other. Their expectations, those old stories about who they are, or who they think they are, or how we think someone is thinking. So it's just stories. We don't always know, do we? Someone told me recently, about, I'm changing some stuff at my concrete business, my brick and mortar, Wellhouse 1900. And she said, you know, a good rule of thumb is, imagine you're the pilot in a plane. And before you're going to take off, 
you got to check to make sure everything is in working order. Before that pilot takes off, he checks all of the panels. He makes sure the wheels, he makes sure the flaps. I don't know parts of an airplane, but you get my drift. That is how we should be looking at our daily life. And that is how we should be looking at anything we want to change. Wait a minute. Am I ready? Do I know where I'm going? Are all of my pieces in place? And what is my intention? What's my goal? Now it's easier to move forward with something. But it is both people always. You know, we climb the ladder. When I say we're here, hopefully in this lifetime, for me anyway, I want to climb the ladder of evolution. I want to have this lifetime for me, not perfection, because I'll never be that, nor do I even want to be perfect. So in this lifetime, we climb this ladder of soul evolution. We climb this ladder of human evolution. And there are many rungs on that ladder. And sometimes we're going up and sometimes we're jumping back down. We might be tempted to shift down to the lower rungs when we our mood changes or someone pushes our button. Stories from our past, whenever we're triggered, then we can go down. Ideally, however, we don't let other people bring us down those rungs. So for instance, if uh, Nancy, who wanted to go on that trip, was here, her husband disappointed her by saying he didn't really want to go, but he would. So he was down here a little disappointed. She's up here happy. And then he says that. And now she dropped down. Now she's mad and angry. And here they are down here expecting. Both of them are dropped. Say they went from ladder, rung ladder six. And now they drop to two where they're bitter and resentful. And that's up to her. Nancy didn't have to let herself drop down so far on the ladder. That's up to us to choose. Do we want to stay up or are we going to let those triggers drop us back down? And now how can they communicate healthfully when they're both down here? We can't communicate healthfully from rung two of our ladder. So how do we get back up? That mindfulness training. We allow ourselves to make the choice to not let someone have us climb down the ladder. You know, we get tempted if we're crabby, if we're tired, again, if we're triggered. If we pull up something from our past, now we go down the ladder. And we can stay there, but how do we get out? We have to take action steps. We have to go back to our goal. We have to go back to our intention. We have to remember it. Okay, my intention is to become a better communicator. So can I communicate healthfully when I feel like this sucks? No, no. But I can breathe and I can find ways to get back up onto a higher rung of that ladder by finding something to be grateful for, by telling myself the truth. You know, actually, they're going on the trip with me. And let's talk about how we can have fun together, right? They could, they could come from a place of co-creation, communicate why he's disappointed instead of her getting mad and just shutting that door. We want to open that up because it's a choice. It's a choice for her to drop down and stay on the lower rung. Or she could be in compassion and say, you know, let's talk about that. Why did you want to go on the other trip instead of this one? And I really appreciate that you're going to go with me. And let's try to do this from a way that you feel satisfied too. What if we did that instead of going into the old pattern of just being mad? Because every situation throughout the day can drop us from the rung eight to the rung two, the rung six to the rung one or on the ground floor where we think everything sucks. We have to be steadfast and allow ourselves and give ourselves incentive to get back up. What's my goal? And sometimes it helps actually if you give yourself mini goals. I'm going to do this for myself. I'm really working on how I can communicate from a healthier place, from a higher rung on that ladder. And then I'm going to do something that I wanted to do just for me. Maybe take a class, right? Maybe for me, it'd be like, I'm going to go sign up for a pottery class. Because as we step up that ladder, and if our partner's not on that same rung, 
we're going to be triggered a lot. If your boss, if your children are not on that same rung, and we go back into feeling those old energies, that old patterning. But we are trying to create the new patterning, new patterning. So we need to open the mind. We need to find ways to understand other people. We need to find ways to be in compassion with someone else's story. And like I said, a different podcast episode, we also want to create the safe container because it's easy to get comfortable and stay stuck. But we want to create a safe container so our partner can be vulnerable. And that's something two people could work through. You know, I'm going to go because you want me to go, but I, I really am not jazzed about it. Well, let's talk about that. Can we make it more exciting? What are some things that we can do? And, you know, I really appreciate that you're going to go when you don't really want to. I appreciate that you're doing that for me. So as this continues to unfold where you are in your story, where you are in the relationship with someone else, as those triggers happen, that's time to just pause and do a little bit of a dive. And I don't mean go down the ladder. We can. We can drop a rung. We can drop six rungs. And then we can choose, wait a minute, let's go back and tell the truth now. What's the truth? And where can I problem solve this? Because for those of you that choose to be healthy problem solvers, and I'm not saying fixers, healthy problem solvers when it is your problem to solve. It's a good place to check where you're at because we cannot solve problems in a very healthy state if we're down on the second rung of the ladder. So we want to get back up on a higher rung. And that's where healthy solutions come from. And even just stepping into something about that person that you like or the truth of, you know, that's really kind of them that they're going to do this when they'd rather do something else. Every single day, we get to choose where we are on that ladder. And this is reminding me of, I had a meditation one time and I saw this incredible light, beautiful light source. It was so powerful. It was hard for me to stay in that in that energy field. But I noticed a circle. And at the top of that circle was this incredible light. And at the bottom of the circle was lack of light. It was just absence of light. And at any given day, where are we on that circle? We can be near the top. I don't know how, how, how long as humans we can sustain that because we're human and we're imperfect and we have all these emotions. But check where you are. Check where you are on the ladder. Check where you are on the circle. Because some days, if you're halfway down on the right side of the circle, you're between feeling that darkness and feeling the light. That's comfortable. Or do you want to check in and raise your vibration and get it a little closer to that light? And we do that absolutely by honoring ourselves first. So in any relationship dilemma, we want to pause and honor self first without dishonoring the other person. We don't want to dishonor the other person. And we also want to remember that we're not damaged goods. No one is damaged goods. We all have stuff we're working on. So if on those days that you're way down on that ladder or on those days when you're in the circle but you're closer to feeling more of the lack of light than light, remind yourself all the good things that you've done. Remind yourself all of the ways you have been kind to yourself and others because we all have stuff we're working on and we can always get back up the ladder rungs. We can always get back up to near the top of that beautiful divine light. Through that, remember, we have to make our life about us, not just about the partnership, but the happier we are, the easier it is. And I mean with our own life the easier it is to be happy in a relationship. Affairs happen, and I think I've talked about this before, second chakra, affairs happen when we are not living a life that we love and we're not connecting with our partner in healthy ways. And instead of finding healthy ways to get creative and get our juices flowing, then we are putting our happiness in someone else's lap. So when the, when the affair ends, we go back down, right? Or when that person can't sustain it, when it's not all bliss, 
But that's where we can come back in and say, wait a minute, what's my life like? What's my life like? Because if I want to gain momentum in this lifetime, if I want to evolve to a higher rung in this lifetime, I've got to be honoring myself and then, of course, honoring others. But I also want to be making sure that I am making my life about me. And when we make our life about me, that can seem egotistical. However, not in the, in the way of symbolic sight. Think of it this way. If we are making our life about me in a healthy way, I'm honoring me, I'm working on me, I'm not going to let people trigger me so much. I'm still going to be involved with people and I'm still going to ask questions when I don't understand because that's how I'm going to gain clarity because, again, it's about me. It's the unhealthy way when we make things about me, when I feel slightly or a lot offended when someone says something or they don't return my call. When we are taking things personally too much and feeling disempowered, that's the shadow side of making everything about us. However, we can do it from the way of understanding, wait a minute, how is this triggering me and why? And now it's really about us in a healthy way. So you look at it from the standpoint of your symbolic sight. What am I to learn from this? If I'm allowing myself to learn something from this, then I'm using my symbolic sight in a healthy way. I'm having this experience of making it about me in a healthy way. And with that couple, when they're realizing, ah, every time I get triggered, I'm dropping my energy down into the pit and now I can get stuck there and blame it all on you or I can pause and check in with myself wait a minute I'm now down on the second rung of the ladder but I don't want to be here so we have the choice people can pull us off the ladder they can pull us off the high rungs if we let them but it's our choice and any given time if we allow ourselves to stand in someone else's shoes and say, okay, why is this triggering me? And what's going on within them? Or ask them, hey, can you tell me what's going on about that situation? I'm not clear about it. Now we are moving into those higher realms again. Now we're on the higher rungs. As long as we're asking from a place of sincerity, not, not condescension, not sarcasm, but we really do want to know what's going on with somebody. So let yourself this week pay attention to where you're at. Are my emotions up on the higher rungs? My mind up there? And I don't mean living in the clouds. I mean bringing it into reality. Or am I really struggling? Am I allowing myself to be in a place of too much misery? Where am I? And you can even envision a ladder. And you can even write down, you know, in one of the episodes I talked about the Hawkins vibrational scale. It is a pyramid or it's a ladder or it's a, I mean, people do it different ways, but those are the rungs of the ladder. So checking in with that, checking in with your emotions, checking in with where you are. Always a pleasure to be here and to have anyone listening. So again, thank you so much. And thank you for sharing. And I want you to have an incredibly beautiful week because we are still in February and it's love month. So remember the challenge of allowing yourself to just use love everywhere in healthy ways this week, this month. Let yourself find ways to love yourself. Let yourself find ways to love others. I'm Meg Michelson. And once again, I love being here with you. And I look forward to connecting with you next week.